All right, let's do it. We got more questions. Now we're moving into the training questions. There's a lot of these. These are the ones I really like answering. This is where I feel my expertise really, really shines when it comes to the training questions. This is where a lot of my science education is based upon. So um, let's knock these out. The first question, um, actually, I wanna get this question for Gary Hooks. Gary Hooks is a good guy. I know Gary and uh, he wants to, uh, he won our little contest or one of our Facebook contests. So um, I'm uh, expediating, Expedi what is the word? <laughs> expediating? <laughs> Exp <laughs> you guys know what I'm trying to say. I'm expediating this question to the top of the list for, for, for Gary. And Gary wants to know, I hope you're well, pal. If under stress from business or moving house, which I've been recently doing, what's the best way to make sure your muscle gains don't suffer due to your stress levels being higher than normal? Thank you in advance for your quality advice as always. Okay, Gary, so the best advice I can give you is Maintain the frequency of your workouts, but decrease the length. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do more brief workouts. Um, if your cortisol levels are already high, we don't want to accentuate them more with our traditional longer workouts. So this would be a great time to introduce, um, you know, like a program like Seven Minute Muscle. Uh, John Benson Seven Minute Muscle, which is by far the most amazing brief intense workout program in existence. I created all the workout videos for the program. I recommend probably the 14 minute protocol, uh, one body part a day, five days a week, 14 minute workout, and it's the most grueling 14 minutes of your life, but it'll help you manage your cortisol levels better. A couple extra tips, definitely supplement with more vitamin C, uh, anywhere from, you know, I personally do five to seven grams a day spread out throughout the day when I'm under stress conditions, and that will help as well. I wanna to get to this question on stress here before the training questions. It's from Samuel. Samuel asks a really good question, great topic here. Uh, with all the grocery shopping, the eating, the cooking, the cleaning, training, working, family time, how do you manage everything without feeling stressed out? Thanks. So this is a great question and if, you are, if you're a member of Live Large TV, which I highly recommend you do, we, my father goes over 20 full episodes in how to like, Get your life centered around what's important, how to manage your priorities, how to manage your time, your energy, and you'll gain a lot of life-changing insights in Live Large TV. Uh, one of the things we talk about is how you need to schedule unwind time. So we have grind time. Grind time is when you just you know, have to do everyday life tasks, but you also have to schedule time to just unwind. So for me, after 7 p.m., I shut everything down. I don't work after 7 p.m. I relax with my wife, I watch TV, I read. And I also start my day off with the one hour power hour. The one hour power hour is a personal habit of mine where I just start off the day where I just read. I read um, personal development books, sometimes I pray, sometimes I just think about my goals, I just get centered on what's important. And those two things in my day really help me stay de-stressed. Okay, next question goes to Randall Lynn. Randall's hit a plateau, he's 20, he's been training for one and a half years now. He said he's gained 20 kilograms so far without gaining much fat, but I've recently hit a plateau. I'm unable to put uh, on any more mass. About three to four months ago, I increased my caloric intake to about 3,500 to 4,000 and 250 to 280 grams of protein daily, but I'm still unable to gain weight. Any advice in how I can gain weight? I'm an ectomorph, by the way, thanks in advance. So one thing I could suggest to you, Rando, is, um, I mean, I could tell you right now, you don't, your problem isn't the calories. Your calories are there. I'd be interested in more knowing the quality of the calories. Uh, can you be rotating your protein sources around more often? Um, could you perhaps be getting more vegetables to help assimilate those calories better? Uh, could you be spreading them out? Uh, I think the answer here has to do with your training. Most likely, the big thing with building muscle is it occurs in spurts, so it's not a linear process. Like fat loss, you can continue to keep losing fat linearly, linear, linear not even gonna try that. <laughs> yeah, with, uh, with muscle building, it doesn't happen like that. You kind of like make gains and then you kind of coast, make gains and you kind of coast. What I highly recommend you do, what I wanna know is have you had a recovery week in a while? I recommend a full week off every 12 to 16 weeks. There's a good chance, um, you know, hormonally, immune wise, um, central nervous system wise, you might just need a break. And then when you start up again, you'll start making gains again. So 
So this question goes to Spencer. Spencer wants to know, uh, he's got a question on lifting accessories. He says, hey Vince, what's your opinion on lifting straps? Will they hinder forearm development in the long run? Yes, if you use them all the time. Just like you'll create imbalances if you just use dumbbells or you just use barbells or you only use stability balls, balls you'll, you'll create an imbalance. You'll hinder your gains in the long term if you always use lifting straps. So I recommend to view them simply as a tool and you use certain tools to assist certain goals. So if your goal is explosiveness, relative strength, power, then lifting straps would certainly be acceptable because you don't want any limiting links when you're going for a max lift. So that's when I would say they're acceptable. So you know, if you look at your, your program from a, a yearly standpoint, you're probably gonna have phases where you're focusing on those things maybe um, you know, 20, 30% of the year, and that's when I would use the lifting straps. But the other times of the year, you know, we, you know, let's say you're in a general preparatory phase or in a hypertrophy phase, we don't want to use lifting straps. We want to ask, actually use the musculature there, and um, that's the approach that I take with lifting straps. Next question goes to Fernando. Fernando wants to know why is it that some people don't even have huge muscles, but they're strong? This is a great question, and this will involve just looking at some basic training theory. So when we train, depending on the loads you use, depending on the speed of the movement, depending on the rep ranges, that will dictate a, a certain training effect. When you're working generally with one to six reps, sets that last less than 18 seconds, longer rest, rest periods, more complex movements with speed and explosiveness involved, what's typically gonna happen is you're gonna increase the efficiency that your central nervous system recruits the muscle fibers being targeted. So essentially you're increasing the function of the muscle. And these are called neural gains. So people who are strong, are simply becoming better at recruiting their own muscles. So they're using more of what they currently have. To actually experience hypertrophy from a muscle, that requires a lot of mechanical tension, 40 to 60 seconds a, ten, uh, 40 to 60 seconds a, a set, plus a lot of fatigue. All right, one more question from Nick. This is a great transition from the last question, but he says, what's the best rep range for building muscle? First off, I gotta mention what I did in season three of Live Large TV. This is my private members community for, I think it's like, it works out like seven bucks a month. You can get access to all three seasons, but specifically in season three, I do 20 full blown episodes. Every episode is like 15 to 20 minutes long, specifically on hypertrophy program design. I go through all the science and all of the theory and principles that go into every component of building muscle. So if you're serious about learning about every component of building muscle, definitely wanna join Live Large TV just for that reason alone. Uh, but now to answer your question, so all my Live Large members already know what I'm gonna say here. Best range, rep range for building muscle depends on time under tension. For example, uh, you probably hear somebody say eight to 12 reps. What if they do their eight to 12 reps like this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That set probably took 12 seconds. 12 seconds is not enough um, time under tension. There's not sufficient tension on the muscles to actually break down for, for them to actually a uh, hypertrophy. So what we know with hypertrophy is that you need to have your sets last anywhere from 40 to 60 seconds. So we can achieve that with a variety of rep ranges. We could do sets of six, we could do sets of 20. As long as the tension is within that 40 to 60 seconds, you will build muscle. Um, now obviously the caveat is that the loads still need to be sufficient. This doesn't mean a light or easy 40 to 60 seconds of work. This is like 40 to 60 seconds of ball busting work. So you have to keep that in mind. So there you have it, another episode. Thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to do this with you again. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do that right now. All right, have a great day.